Hello everybody. Today I just want to talk about a little example involving the center of mass of a 2D object, in this case a parabola. So to get started with this, this example, I'm going to go ahead and draw a little picture of what we're talking about. So I'm going to make some axes real quick. And I'll go ahead and draw our object, which is a parabola. Let's keep going until I get a decent looking one. That's good enough. And we're going to say that this parabola has a height of 4. Now, we need to enclose the domain of this object. And so we're going to enclose it with the line y equals 0, right? which is just the x-axis. So the domain that we're looking at is going to be this region, which I'm going to call D. Now, naturally, this object is going to have some associated mass with that little m. Also, one more piece of information, I'm going to say that this object has a constant mass density. And we're going to call that sigma. Right? And what that means is, is that if we were to take the entire mass of this, and we were to divide it by the entire area, then that would be equal to an infinitesimally small change in mass over a very small change in area. And both of these would equal the mass density, right? Because it's a constant mass density. So the little changes in uh, mass per a small change in area equal the overall change in mass over the overall change in area. So let's go ahead and box this idea real quick. And we'll use this in a little bit. Now, the goal of the problem is to find the center of mass. So, in the x direction, right, well, I suppose let's start by claiming that the best way to find the center of mass is to find it in two directions. First, along the x-axis, and second, along the y-axis. With those two points, right, you can determine the location of the center of mass. So first, let's find it along the x-axis. And this should be fairly obvious. And I'm not going to do any math for this. You know, you could use integral calculus to prove it, but it's unnecessary because you can see that this object is very symmetrical on both sides. It has the same mass distribution on the left side as it does on the right side of this y-axis. So we know that in the x, uh, on the x-axis, this is going to have a center of mass at x equals zero. Now, the more interesting part is to look at the center of mass uh, for our y-axis, right? And that's what we're going to be tackling today. But hey, technically we already did half of the problem since we found one of the two coordinates. But that's not what you're here for. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about how we do this. I'm going to call the center of mass location R. Now, what we know about center of mass is that it is the integral of x dm, right? And let's just go ahead and write this as y right now. y dm over the total mass of the object. So right, so in order to get this in terms of coordinates, right, that we can actually use boundaries in our region, we need to change 
uh, this dm, right, into da or dx dy, right? Something that can uh, that we can find actual bounds for. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So, unfortunately, I already stated a condition that allows us to do that, and that is that dm over da. Oh, whoops. Over da equals sigma. So therefore, sigma da equals dm. So we're going to make that substitution right now. So, and we can write this as a double integral, right? Because we're looking at da over our domain d. Right, just to be clear, we're looking at the domain D here of Y sigma DA over M. Now, what else did we say about this situation? Well, we said that sigma also equaled the total mass over the total area because of the fact that it, we have a constant mass density going on. Therefore, we'll make that substitution as well. I'll go ahead and erase this sigma and replace it with an m over a. I'll cancel out the masses. So, we are left with the following integral. Now, this would be good, except we're missing a couple of pieces of information still. The first of those is the area of the region. So we can calculate that with a simple integral. So in order to find the area of our region, let's go ahead and write out the function. We have f of x equals negative x squared plus 4. Now, in order to find the area of this shape, we take the integral from our two bounds, our two x bounds, right? Which I'm going to show in a moment are 2 and negative 2, right? And you can very easily do this by setting x to, or setting y to 0 so that you're locked onto the x axis. So we have 0 equals negative x squared plus 4. So x squared equals 4, right? x equals plus or minus 2. OK. Now we've got that settled. So in order to find the area, so I'll say a equals the integral from negative 2 to 2 of our function, which is negative x squared plus 4 dx. Let's go ahead and simplify this out. This is negative one third x cubed plus four x from two to negative two, which equals negative eight thirds plus eight. And I could subtract this with, an, with uh, plugging in negative two, but I think we can agree that this is the same as just doing 2 times that, so I'm just going to do that. Um, so we end up getting, this should be 5 and 1 third, it looks like, times 2, which is 10 and 2 thirds, which is 32 over 3. All right. So in this little section, all we did was we found the area of our shape. So we can make that substitution. The next thing that we need to do is we need to find the boundaries for our entire region, for this domain D. And we already did a little bit of the battle. We found the boundaries, uh, the x boundaries. Let's go ahead and come up 
with boundaries to come up with this top and bottom piece. And again, those are fairly simple too. The top piece is naturally y equals, uh, we'll do it over here. The top part, right, is just the parabola. y equals negative x squared plus 4. Yeah, oh, jeez. Little sneeze. So I'm going to call this my first boundary, boundary 1. Or better yet, boundary top. Next I'll call it boundary bottom. y equals 0, right? Because that's just this bottom piece here. So I'll go ahead and make myself an integral. Well, let's just make these substitutions into our current integral. So we have two things to substitute. I think the best way to do this is going to be to take this integral over here. We're going to drag it over right here. And we're going to make our substitutions. So we have the double integral of y over 32 over 3, which I'll just flip and make 3y over 32. Now we can uh, replace dA with dx dy. Actually we'll do dy dx due to our boundaries, right? Our boundary y contains an x whereas our x boundaries contains a constant and we want a constant answer. So, our bottom to top looks like this, and for our x boundaries, we're going from negative 2 to 2. Perfect. Now, we can go ahead and simplify this, which equals 3 over 32 times 1 half, so I'm just going to Right, this is 64 y squared from 0 to negative x squared plus 4, right? And of course we have the full integral as well. So we'll go ahead and plug in our negative x squared plus 4. 64 negative x squared plus 4 squared, and we have the integral from negative 2 to 2 dx. Now again, you could solve this analytically, but I'd say that I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to promptly type this into my calculator. Negative 2 to 2, 3 over 64, and I end up getting the solution 1.6. This represents the y-coordinate of my center of mass. So in order to fully write out my center of mass coordinates, of course you write it out as an x and y coordinate, so it's 0, 1.6. And there we go. Thanks for watching, and catch you later.